everybody out there. Thanks for joining us again. Nice to have you back. We had an inquiry about will be and won't be. Well, it's a really easy baby. Let me show you. First of all, let's remember that when I use will in English, it means that there's a 50% chance either, or I use it for spontaneous actions. For example. Okay, so the meaning of will be, first of all, is you're given a prognosis. For instance, tomorrow there will be nice weather. The weather will be nice tomorrow. Hmm? So it's a prognosis. But remember that when I say something about a person, about a situation, it's not only a prognosis. It is something where I'm only 50% sure about. What does it mean when we speak our English with the world? It means it's never a hundred percent premise. In some languages, when you look up will, then it is a certainty for the future, but it's never sure for the future. So even so, the other word, for instance, in German, uh, it says werden. And when a German uses the German uh, uh, werden and translates it directly into will, then he thinks he's giving a promise, which it is not. So I can use will for a prognosis, and I can use will when I'm 50% sure. So it's good for giving ideas, suggestions, you know? And last but not least, I can use will for spontaneous actions. So let's have a few examples, okay? My first example was, the weather will be nice tomorrow. I'm looking forward to swimming. I think Jenny will be in the swimming pool too. Oh, I'm not promising that Jenny will be in the swimming pool, but there's a 50% chance that Jenny will be in the swimming pool. Or I say, you know what? All your problems are only half as bad. Everything will be okay next week. So I'm giving you a prognosis that everything will be okay next week. Mm, I can ask Rafa. Rafa, will you be here next time to make a video? Yes, I will. Ah, wonderful, great. So you see, Rafa has given me the idea that for 50% he will be back to make this video. Uh, when I say uh, Jenny will be a good secretary, you know, I'm expecting that. I say Jenny will be a good secretary. I don't know, but from my feeling, I think Jenny will be a good secretary. It's not a promise that she is going to be a good secretary. No, she will be a good secretary. It's my feeling. Spontaneous actions. A little example for that is very easy. I see Rafa and his baby doing Christmas shopping for his wife and the baby is in the stroller and he's packed up with bags and sacks full of gifts and he cannot open the door. There's not a sliding door in that shop and I'm just coincidentally coming around the corner. Do you really think I will discuss this with Rafa if I should help him opening the door or not? No, I go to Rafa. Just a minute, Rafa. I'll, the short form of I will, just a minute, Rafa, I say, I'll open the door for you. You see, it's just a spontaneous action. 
I won't discuss uh, with Rafa. Do you think it would be better to open the door or anything? I see the problem and I act. Just a minute, Rafa. I'll open the door for you. A very simple example of spontaneous actions. So, let's look at some examples and how to make questions and to give answers. I can ask, for instance, uh, I could ask Rafa. Rafa, where will you be tomorrow? I'll be teaching music. Oh, you devil, you. <laughs> you see, Rafa will be teaching music. So, Rafa will be at the music school. Rafa, and here it comes, Rafa won't be at Club of Schools. Rafa just told me he will be at the music school. All right? So, logically, Rafa won't be at Club of Schools. Negative. But you know what? You never know. You never, maybe something really super, super urgent is coming. And I will ask Rafa, Rafa, please, please, my computer is breaking down. Could you please help me? And Rafa, maybe, will be at Globuscus anyway. So you see, it's a 50% chance. But when Rafa says, I won't be at Globuscus tomorrow, well, 50% chances are most likely that he won't be at Club Schools. Okay, another little example. Okay, you want to go on vacation or the pretty say holiday. Okay, so you want to go on vacation and you want to book a hotel. My advice for you is go on vacation in fall or maybe spring, because the hotel will be cheaper in spring. The hotel will be cheaper in fall. So you see, I said the hotel will be cheaper in spring. And when you turn it into a question, when Will the hotel be cheaper? So simply, you go like this. The hotel will be cheaper. And for the question, will the hotel be cheaper in spring? Or when will the hotel be cheaper? So you see, you just for the question, you just go crisscross. And then, let me ask Rafa again. Rafa, will the hotel be cheaper in summertime? It won't be cheaper at summertime. Very good, exactly. So you see, Rafa's answer You see, Rafa gave me a negative answer. I asked, uh, will the hotel be cheaper in summertime? Rafa said, no, it won't be cheaper in summertime. Here is our negative. So, now about spontaneous actions, I would like to show you another trick. At school, you probably learn there is also shell. But let's not be that complicated. Shell is old fashioned. The only time when we use shell is really uh, when I refer it in a question to myself. For instance, with my little example for Rafa, shall I oops, open the door for you? You see, I have the choice. Remember my little example? I see Rafa shopping bags, baby stroller, and there's not a sliding door. I have to open the door. Rafa can't open the door. So, I can go to Rava 
and say simply, oh, just a minute, Rafa, I'll open the door. And while I'm doing it, while I'm saying, excuse me, and while I'm saying it, I'm opening the door. But I can also go to Rafa, oh, Rafa, look at here, shall I open the door for you? It's more a question, but the same situation. While I'm asking, shall I open the door for you? I'm doing it. So you see, it's a very spontaneous action. If you should do something or not, it's not really worth a discussion. And it doesn't matter if I ask Rafa, because there's no sliding door, or if I ask my boss. Yeah? Shall I call Mr. Jones right now? Uh, shall we meet up with Mr. Jones? Shall I prepare the telco for you? So you see, it's a spontaneous reaction to a situation I'm having on hand. And other than that, we hardly use shell in business English, in complicated letters. But we don't worry about that now. So shell for very spontaneous situations you ask about basically while you're halfway doing it already. Well, do you have any more questions? No. You're hopelessly happy. Good. <laughs> okay, that's all for now. Thank you very much. Please like and subscribe. Bye till next time.